Got another question for the Synoptic Questions playlist. So we're up to number 14 now. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So we've got to come up with an equation for the reduction of lead oxide with methane. Obviously, the lead in the lead oxide is going to be reduced to lead, the element. But we've got some options with the other products. So there's the first option. So the carbon is what's being oxidized here. So this is the complete oxidation of the carbon up to carbon dioxide. Obviously we'll get water as well because the hydrogen in the methane reacts with the oxygen in the lead oxide. So that's how that one balances. The second one you could have is to create carbon monoxide instead of the carbon dioxide, so partially oxidize the carbon. Obviously you still get water, but that's how that one balances. And the third option is to take the carbon in the methane to carbon the element, and that's how that one balances. Moving on to the next part, so another important safety precaution, apart from safety glasses and lab coat. Well, the students using methane to reduce the lead oxide. It's a flammable gas, so you need to keep that away from a naked flame. Another one you could have is down to the fact that you're using lead oxide or you're making lead. It's obviously a toxic substance and so therefore this would be neatly carried out either in a fume cupboard or somewhere with good ventilation. Part three now, so two modifications a student could use to make sure that all of the oxygen has been removed. So the first one you could go for is heat till constant mass. Obviously. The mass is changing as the oxygen's been removed. Once that stops changing, all the oxygen's gone. Another one you could give is something along the lines of increasing the surface area of the lead oxide. So you could either break it up, make it into smaller pieces, or you could use powdered lead oxide. So there's two, so that would get us the marks, but another couple you could use, you could talk about using excess methane to make sure that all of the lead oxide reacts. And a fourth one you could give is down to the fact that if all the oxygen's been removed from the lead oxide, you're going to generate carbon dioxide. So if you bubble the gas produced through lime water and it goes cloudy, you've got carbon dioxide made and therefore the lead oxide's been fully reduced. Moving on to the next part, so there's the answer. I'll just quickly talk through where the numbers come from. So the 3.132 grams of lead is obviously the mass of the dish and lead at the end minus the mass of the dish on its own. The mass of the oxygen, this 0.322 grams, is the difference between these two numbers here. So the dish and the lead oxide minus the dish and the lead. So divide them by the MRs of lead and oxygen, we get the moles. Make sure you give this to three significant figures. Divide both by the smallest, so we get this ratio of 1 to 1.3 recurring. So if you multiply them both by 3, obviously that's going to go up to a whole number. So we get this 3 to 4 ratio for the empirical formula. And finally, part B, the structure in solid silicon dioxide is giant covalent, and in solid carbon dioxide is simple covalent. So why have we got these very different melting points? It's because if you want to melt silicon dioxide, you need a high amount of energy to break the strong covalent bonds between the atoms, the silicon and oxygen atoms, Whereas to melt carbon dioxide, you'll need a small amount of energy to break the weak induced dipole forces that exist between the CO2 molecules.